resources, inspiring interviews, business practices, and practical advice to take your art career to the next level. Join Sergio Gomez in today's Artist Next Level and get ready to take control of your career. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Artist Next Level podcast. I am very happy that you decided to tune in today, and especially because I have, you know, a super, super special episode coming your way. I'm not here by myself. I'm actually have company, not in front of me in terms of like physically, but from Malaysia, my good friend Drew Harris, Canadian artist. He's going to be joining me today. We're going to talk about all things painting, the process of making. Now, even if you're not a painter, you're going to enjoy this conversation. We're going to talk a really dive in into the art making process, which is something that I typically I don't talk about because I focus so much into the marketing aspects of things. But uh, Drew, which is an artist who I highly respect, and you'll see why in a second, um, you know, I really uh, have great conversations with him and we talk about our work. We talk about, we share our process and the things that we're going through. And I just finished a body of work. He also finished uh, some new works as well. And, uh, you know, in these conversations, I ask, hey, Drew, what if we just record one of these sessions and we just talk about painting. We talk about, you know, resolving, uh, you know, an image and what it goes into that process. And um, uh, I think you're going to love this conversation. I don't know into what exactly we are going to be going to, in which direction. I asked Drew, prepare some questions for me. I'll prepare some questions for you. So we're, it's not me interviewing him. We're going to uh, kind of like a tennis match. We're going to play tennis with questions to each other and uh, have a great time. And so you're coming in for the ride. It's totally uncut, unedited. <laughs> what you're going to get today is exactly the full length of the conversation. Now, before I actually introduce you to uh, to Drew, uh, really quickly, just so you uh, know a little bit of the back end story, in case you haven't seen my episode with Drew and Breakfast with Sergio, I, uh, when, so I was a student um, many, some 20 something years ago, I was a student uh, of art here in Chicago. One day I was walking into the gallery district here in, in the city. Uh, for an opening, you know, like I would go with my friends uh, as a student just to see what was going on. And I walk into this art gallery in Chicago in the in River North area, which was uh, the trending art gallery district. And I walked in and I encountered this really beautiful, luscious, you know, uh, uh, paintings that really caught my attention. And uh, they were abstract works. Um, most of them had either a line or something that was very nicely designed, uh, you know, kind of this... Uh, uh, placed within the work, very thoughtful. And uh, those paintings really, really, really touched me. And as a student, uh, I had enough money to buy the catalog. So I purchased the catalog, I took it with me, and I never forgot the name Drew Harris. And uh, it's a catalog that I had it, you know, with me for many years. I, I didn't meet the artist at the opening. I went on another time and while the show was up. Uh, this is a time before the internet, before Instagram, before social media, where I could just Google somebody, right? It's a time where you had books and you and you collected postcards uh, of artists or and uh, or exhibitions that you thought were uh, were good. And so I had that for many years with me in my collection of uh, of catalogs that I collected over the years. And so fast forward that many many years, and uh, twenty uh, twenty twenty, I believe. Uh, last, yeah, just recently, last uh, November or so, uh, I received a message on my Instagram from a guy named Drew Harris. So uh, immediately that name popped into my head. And uh, because again, it was a name I, I hadn't uh, forgotten. And uh, I'm like, well, that's, that sounds awfully familiar. And uh, hold and behold, it was the actual Drew Harris, we, which I had never met in the flesh. I had, I didn't even know how he looked like. Uh, but I well remember his paintings and I saw them on Instagram and uh, we started chatting, we started talking and uh, it's been a friendship since then. Um, you know, uh, he has inspired my work in many ways, even before he even knew me, particularly in my early years as an artist uh, and also uh, sharing kind of like the love for art and design where I also have a background in graphic design as, as does he. And uh, he's an artist who is very accomplished, has traveled around the world, Canadian born, now living in Malaysia. And uh, his uh, work is found in many of the very prestigious collections around the world. Uh, he uh, does from uh, really small paintings to giant, enormous uh, works of art. And uh, I, you know, I highly uh, appreciate now not only his work, but now I can say uh, that I appreciate his friendship even more. So 
With that uh, introduction, I want to introduce you now to the man himself, Drew Harris. Hi, Drew. How are you? Hey, <clears throat> hey, my friend. Thank you. Wow, <laughs> that's a great introduction. And you did that seamlessly. It was beautiful. That's that's great. Thank you, thank you, Drew. Well, you know, as uh, as promised, we're gonna have a uh, kind of a a match today <laughs> of sorts Ready. of <laughs> <Love to rock, laughs> buddy. <laughs> <laughs> of talking about process and thinking about ideas and uh, talking about you know how uh, art is made and uh, I, I think as we as we start in the conversation some of our friends will find there are uh, a lot of things in which uh, you know we share in common in the way we approach your work and or at least we'll we'll, we'll find out <laughs> if that is true and uh, you know uh, I, I you know I highly uh, appreciate you coming into this conversation and uh, without knowing exactly what we're going to talk about <laughs> you know well, I and, think that that's the the beauty of these kind of conversations. It's just yeah. a dialogue, mm -hmm. and you and I converse in this manner so easily. Yeah. Uh, so let's. Yeah. I uh, mean, let's get started. I'm yeah. So. Excited. So uh, Drew asked me. He wants to serve first. So he's going to ask <laughs> the first question, <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Are you ready? I am well, totally you... totally ready. Okay. So I, I I don't go about it from a perspective of you know. Uh, so much at this point in the conversation about learning your uh, techniques, for example. But I'm, I'm really keenly interested in where it all started. And, I, and this could be something that is uh, your influences, such as uh, your childhood, mm -hmm. uh, living in Mexico, your parents. I know a little bit about your father, which you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see how that work has uh, transpired uh, that influence has transpired into your work, uh, mm -hmm. the very spiritual levels of mm -hmm. this. But I'd like to, to ask you, uh, your early influences are still very evident today, it appears, mm -hmm. that your the, the image of the figure and, and mm -hmm. so forth has, has been a, a constant throughout your mm -hmm. career. Uh, and tell us a little bit about... Uh, where that came from, because I'm sure it's not just something that's that's been developed in the last 10 years. This is something that comes from something much more spiritual, much, much more ingrained mm -hmm. from youth, perhaps. So yeah. maybe I've just answered your question, but uh, give me your take on it. I think it's yeah. it's an interesting story. It's always good to get the back end first. Right, right. No, I, I love that question because, uh, you know, when, whenever I'm asked, like, where you know, how did I get started? I always say that I started in church. And uh, you know, what does that mean? So be because, uh, as you mentioned, so my dad, as you know, was a, uh, he's now retired. He was a, mini a church minister, a pastor. So, and my mom, you know, was also very involved in the church. So as a little boy, you know, I had to be in church Sunday and all day and then Saturday and then Wednesday and whenever there was something going on, right? So I went along. And uh, so in services and things, my mom, to keep me quiet and occupied, she would always bring with me like little index cards and, and pens. So she would give me those to me. And uh, so I would sit in the church and just draw and just start drawing, making stories. And uh, and the the f cool thing about it is that, you know, as I was a little kid making these stories, sometimes I, it would be like little uh, storyettes of things that I imagined or I saw. I love space or sometimes a lot of rocket ships and stuff like that. Or sometimes I would draw whoever was uh, speaking in the front or the people singing and things like that. And then the funny thing is that my aunt, she started collecting those little note cards, and uh, so it was it was really cool that uh, you know she had that uh, that also appreciation for them. So I felt like even though I was a little kid uh, making these things, that also my aunt uh, you know had an appreciation for them and and then collect them. So that was kind of fun. Uh, so that's kind of where it all started. Now the the thing is that when I was growing up between that age, which I can remember how old I was, really young, to about sixteen when I came to to Chicago, you know, growing up in Mexico City, um, even though I love art and uh, I was the kid who always was drawing in class, I never really, um, never really uh, believed that I could actually be an artist, mainly because I never saw one in Mexico myself. I in the circle of my family and friends, nobody was an artist. You know, my dad, um, 
love art and uh, he drew and things like that, but he never did painting or anything. But uh, I I never thought, you know, like when someone asks you, so what do you want to be when you grow up? I never said artist because I, I didn't see in my mind that as a checkbox, you know, for like artists, you know. So the closest I could find was graphic designer or architect. So I love uh, structures and I would sometimes like draw like buildings and uh, and design buildings and and then graphic design. So I, I always had an inclination for those things, but uh, it was really uh, it was really until I came here to the United States in high school that my high school teacher said, I think you have an inclination for art. Have you considered an art career? And that's when I said, well, no, but he said, you should. And so I really credit my high school teacher, Mr. Larson, you know, today for really giving me that seed that said, you know, really putting in my heart the question of, of uh, you know, is this something that you want to do? Why don't you just go for it? Uh, yeah. And opening up that opportunity. So that's kind of uh, my first uh, uh, interaction now really, really with art was in college where I really started to paint and draw and uh, and really get more immersed into, uh, you know, art and art in Chicago and things like that. So it was really until college where I really met the first full-time living artist, which uh, it was Mario Castillo, an artist here from Chicago who went to speak at the college, my first year in college. And I just, I just uh, absorbed everything he had to say and just opened yeah, up a whole new world. That's fantastic. I mean, it, <clears throat> the, the reason I asked that I, uh, and you just explained it so eloquently that um, I think these influences of mm -hmm. uh, not only from the religious side and the mm -hmm. church, but you say architect, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would imagine that as a young boy sitting in a church, mm -hmm. which of course the church itself is, it's an architectural gem. It's, right. it's based on certain lines. Mm -hmm. Uh and then you've got, of course, behind the pulpit, mm -hmm. if it were, uh, you've got all of this religious iconography. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I, I see this as an influence in your work, yeah. uh, primarily because of the, the up and down format. You know, you've got this thing, these right. figures always uh, seemingly falling or either rising or falling mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. top. And they could be either half cut off. Uh, and yeah. I believe that we have this, this influence mm -hmm. uh, and these visual memory captures mm -hmm. when we're children. Uh, and, and I think that this is hugely influential in our work today. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was similar. <clears throat> I grew up in a sort of a Presbyterian uh, mm -hmm. uh, religion, mm -hmm. uh, although it was not very uh, adhered to in any manner. Mm -hmm. uh, and my, some of my early recollections was indeed the church as well, mm -hmm. uh, having to be sort of forced into going to the church. So it became a negative for me yeah. in yeah. a way, mm -hmm. uh, but my mother was a painter. So after oh, church okay. on Sundays, mm -hmm. she would end up painting. And I recall as a young kid, she was doing sort of rep replications of you know, the last supper because oh, okay. this become, becomes a cultural thing. She yeah. had to fit into a small town in Canada. Uh, and that was my influence. And I recall seeing her work, uh, a, as an artist. And I, you know, I wasn't, uh, doing art at the time. I wasn't like yourself sitting with the cue cards and, you yeah. know, doing, uh, I was, you know, I was told to sit still, you know, yeah. be quiet. <laughs> uh, in the coffer and, and right. no shot, you know? Right, and right. so religion, in my opinion, was not well enforced. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That doesn't come into play into my work. But yeah. the religious iconography did mm -hmm. years later. And mm -hmm. I became uh, much more uh, sort of graphically drawn towards, mm -hmm. you know, the, the traditional Christian cross that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh, and I mention it in a couple of uh, writing pieces. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are those uh, slight influences. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at the time, I wanted to be a pilot. That was, that was my, that was my really? big drop. And I was only eight years old. Wow. wow. <laughs> I had a fear of flying and then that sort of killed that thing. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> but I think that, and so hence, uh, at the time, there were two very influential influences, like yourself. Mm-hmm. You had your parents, your father as a, uh, mm-hmm. a church minister, your yes. mother as someone that really, you know, fully supported your sort of artistic drive. Right, right. And I had the two influences of a mother that had uh-huh. an artistic drive, mm-hmm. but a sort of longing not to be uh, there. I wanted to be somewhere else. And what uh, offered that to me was to be a pilot. <laughs> yeah. Because you could fly I'm anywhere. Always... <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> you could fly anywhere in your imagination. <laughs> I could go anywhere. Yeah. And so I started seeing things in many ways from from above. And yeah, I don't know perspective. Mm-hmm. religious aspect similar to yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got these things that are these iconography or icons mm-hmm. that are coming down the mm-hmm. floating figure, that kind of thing. And a lot of my work in my career has been spent hmm. looking down on earth. And, <laughs> exactly. and, and it's quite, it's, I, I think that there's a, quite a, a synergy between mm-hmm. us in that, yeah. in that right. regard. And then of course you saw my work in 1999 or whatever it was. Right. And that was the influence. And then when I saw your work, your inf- work has now influenced my work and that's really since november so that so i i can see there's a there's a play of influence there yeah but i think the early influences are so important so uh so no the thing that's that is really cool and um now that you're talking about you know your uh, affinity for flying and uh you know seeing things from above you know as i look at your paintings now you know it, it totally makes sense you know borrowing or you know from that uh childhood experience and uh because you know we don't create in a vacuum we create you know based on 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 all the baggage that we all bring to our present you know um how that lays into the world that you are doing when did you realize so now now that's my turn to ask so kind of based on that on that uh, information you gave us uh when did you realize that uh when you started painting um as an abstract painter that you were looking from above it was was that something yeah. that was a conscious choice at the beginning or that's something that you discovered because i think we we discovered a lot about ourselves in in painting right or in art yeah, making. so is that something that you discovered later or something that early on you uh consciously uh, associated that with that childhood memory well i think also the childhood memory you must remember where i grew up i grew up in a small town in canada so you know it was a town of maybe two thousand people so there was a lot of uh what i would say influence was environment i mean i was i was and and also to be frank i mean it wasn't a great home life uh so Mm -hmm. i spent most of my time wandering uh in the countryside just myself my buddies you know we get on our bicycles and we would so the 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 sense of space was Mm -hmm was always an influence to me. Hmm. And I think as a Canadian, I mean, we've got nothing but space, <laughs> yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and flying over the country many years later, I saw just how important that uh, element of space was. Yeah, really well, uh, yeah. But as a painter, I didn't, I didn't consciously uh, start out to paint the, the landscape from above. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's, it's more of a, it's a mindset. Mm. Uh, it's, I always wanted to be somewhere else, mm. you know, Interesting. I, I'm one of these dreamers. I, I dream, hence why I spent, uh, qu- quite a number of years traveling the world. I mean, mm-hmm. I was just always curious of other cultures, mm-hmm. but I, my biggest influence was actually just getting there. Mm-hmm. I love the process of getting to a new, new culture, mm-hmm. uh, primarily because I got to see the land. Yeah. Uh, from above again Mm -hmm. pilot influence you know the idea Mm -hmm. of dreaming i think our biggest influences are really they they stem from that uh uh very early childhood Mm -hmm. and today i see what i saw then or what i dreamt of then Mm -hmm. in my work today uh but as a painter oh i'm i know what i was going to say Mm-hmm. As a painter, I wasn't—I re- didn't really study painting. I studied drawing, uh, sculpture, 
mm -hmm. in graphic design. But my influences at the time were the painters around me, the, the instructors at college. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them were painters, some of them were very good graphic designers. And I, you know, I had this left brain, right brain thing happening because I had a parent that said, you know, you're never going to make your career as an artist. So you better do something that actually can make some money. Right. Something practical. No said this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so I went in through the graphic uh, design line mm -hmm. and, uh, and it wasn't until actually a number of years later, after, after developing my graphic design career, mm -hmm. uh, which shows also in my work today, as you know, I mean, mm -hmm. with the graphic elements, right. But the, the influences came, I think, years later. And again, I say from early childhood, yeah. the memories of Canada, of the open space, mm. and then the influences of the current day painters. I was just a, an observer. Mm -hmm. I observed what was going on. Mm -hmm. And then through chance, I chose to start painting. And, and I just naturally came into it. It was, a, it was something that was... It seemed to be in my blood again from mm. an influence from my parents. So right. that's how I, I started. And then the environment, it's always played an important part in my painting. I've always yeah. loved the good, like almost like seeing things from space. Well, yeah. No, that's interesting. Yeah. I definitely can see it in the work now. And it makes yeah. total sense. Very cool. Excellent. So it's your turn to ask. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, again, this is sort of sort of an organic discussion. So I think <laughs> well, I I'm really curious. Uh, now we're going to start talking about specific paintings. Okay. Now I don't know a lot of your work from your early days. I know mm -hmm. it more sort of from current right. uh, exhibitions and uh, and the work that you're currently producing. But maybe back a year or two. Mm -hmm. So, but you've been pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. uh from the from the works that you did show from your earlier works you always involved the figure in some form. yeah and now tell me that figure has never changed i mean you've you've involved this figure mm -hmm. uh what is it what's the story behind this what are you trying to say in each of the works what is this figure what does it do to complement yeah work? No, I love that question because, yeah, it, I think the figure started to appear in my work as full-size figure um, when I was, I believe, uh, I think it was my third, fourth year in college, was doing my bachelor's. Uh, towards, I think it was towards the end of my bachelor's. And um, I remember very clearly still, I was uh, in my studio at the college and my friend and I, uh, his name is Javier, him and I, we, we live nearby. So we drove to school together. We come back home together. And, um, you know, we were just in love with, with school and with painting. So we would leave the house early in the morning. He is the one that had the car. I didn't have a car. So he would, you know, we'd ride with him and we would just spend all, all day at school, you know, uh, whenever the, if there was a, uh, party and somewhere, you know, we would go there for lunch and then go back and keep working. And we were the first ones to arrive and the last ones to be kicked out of the, of the painting studio. And, um, you know, all of our other friends, you know, were, uh, you know, were, uh, uh kind of, uh, uh, doing other things, but we just love being there. And, and so I remember one night, uh, you know, it was before leaving that, uh, I think that day he wasn't there or something. It was just me in this big studio at the college. And I had a big canvas on the wall and um, I saw my, my shadow on the paint, like on the surface of the, uh, of the uh, painting uh, or the canvas that was, I was working on right on the wall, not on, on um, uh, uh, you know, on an easel, but rather directly on the wall. And I got interested on that. And uh, so I actually placed myself, the, my very first painting with the figure is one that I placed myself. And it actually wasn't canvas, it was paper. Now that I don't know, I always love paper. So I had, I used to purchase the big rolls of paper. So I had a big sheet of paper. I placed myself against the, the surface and then uh, I took a marker and then just trace my silhouette, you know, against it, you know, where first with one hand and then with the other, for the other side. And then I pulled apart from it and, uh, I was really interested and I did a painting uh, that was a man on fire, you know, which was, uh, you know, a, a figure on fire. It had a lot of red and yellow and uh, 
Um, and that was the very first time where, uh, you know, I, I saw the figure, you know, as a, uh, as a symbol, as a, uh, as something that I could change the pose and by changing the pose, it would communicate different messages, you know, like just by tilting my head. Now it was a more submissive form. If I raise the head up now, it's, uh, you know, it's the opposite or if the hands were up versus down or, you know, so I started in my early works experimenting with the pose and, uh, and trying to see what I could say with it. And, uh, so that, I think that's the origin of, my, of the figure in my work where it, it had a, a, a way for me to, um, to communicate ideas through the pose. And what, what I did with the figure early on is that uh, the figure didn't have a face. So there was no trace of, uh, you know, who this figure was. And this was a period which for me was important because, you know, when I started painting, uh, in, in college, I did a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I, and, I, and I see this in a lot of, of artists from that come from other countries, you know, arriving to the United States and they started working uh, and, and, you know, we look back into what we left behind. Right. So, you know, mm. some of my early work before that had, you know, some mastic themes or you know, inspired by the, the muralist or st stuff like that, you know, that, that we look back because we left that world behind. So we're in the search for own, our own identity. And I remember when I approached the, the figure, it became more universal. It was the first time that right. for me, I could de departure from and say, well, you know, I've already explored my heritage. I already know where I come from. Uh, I don't want to be labeled uh, or, you know, or get stuck into, you know, the Latino artist doing the Latino thing. But uh, this figure became more universal in that it had no face. It had no trace. You didn't know where he or she was from. And in some of the works, you know, I, uh, sometimes I like to make even the, um, the gender, you know, vague, where sometimes you know it's a man, sometimes you know it's a woman, or sometimes you don't know. It could be either or, and, uh, and, and, and that's what I really, um, started to working with that. And something that I've stayed with over time, as you said, you know, it's, it's the, the one common element, uh, you know, in the last, you know, 25, uh, years or so of my career, uh, in which the figure has been prominent and it has come and gone in different, different iterations, you know, sometimes in some series has come, um, you know, more pronounced in others. Like I did a series a few years back called the, uh, uh, the healing series and in which the figure is very subtle. It's a very quiet paintings, uh, and others in which, you know, it's, it's more prominent. So it, it comes and goes. And, and also something that I, I really enjoy about the figure when I started working it in full scale, um, was that, uh, you know, because I was working also on paper and so I would buy the sheets of the rolls of paper that were 42 inches wide, which were the, the size of a door. So I would cut the painting the si or, or the paper the size of a door, which would normally would fit just one figure. And right, right. I, yeah, so I started kind of leaving like a little frame around the, the paper, a two inch border, you know, early, early on. And, um, the, so they became like doors. So it was this idea, like if you open a door, you know, that's the, like who, uh, we are encountering the person on the other side and the other side is encountering us, right? Am I going in their world or they coming into my world or where are we just kind of keeping our distance <laughs> and each one stays on our, on our respective side. So that was kind of, uh, the, uh, the, the ideas behind the, the figure and, uh, something that is still, um, continues to give me a lot of, uh, a lot of pleasure to do, to work with. Yeah. Did, did we freeze or we, we're good? Excellent. Okay. I got to stop there. No, but you were talking like this. Oh, <laughs> you know what we should do? It was it, very yeah. strange. It was very That's going to be greatly recorded. Yeah. Well, no, it, it actually would record it just oh, fine. Right. Yeah. So let, let's do this. Can you hear me? Yeah, let, let's cut the video. Yeah, I can now. Okay, let's cut the video and let's just leave the audio. Yeah, it's probably, that's a good idea. Yeah, I, I think he's just okay. trying. And so, just, uh... yeah, let's see.
Okay, so how do I do my, uh, how do I just get the video out of here? Uh, just how click do I on stop the video. Oh, stop video. Okay. Yeah. All right. There we yeah, go. There we are. Okay. I, I think he's just trying to keep up with it. better because it says my, I think it's my uh, uh, internet because it said your internet is unstable uh, as you were talking there. So, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. You tell me when we're going to record again and I'll. Yeah. So, no, I, I didn't stop it. So, we're still recording. So we're good. So I'll I'll, I'll just finish my Not thought and then and then we'll follow up. Can you still hear me? Ah. Oh, is it still okay. coming up or you can still hear me? Yeah, I can. Uh, just sort of the your voice starts to go really slow. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe let's let's uh let's restart let's restart the um uh well let me stop this. Du -du -du -du. Uh, maybe I, want... I should just move to another spot because oh, this maybe. might be a dead spot in my studio. I don't know why. Oh yeah, you... let me yeah, go so... to my desk because it's always a good connection at my desk. Yeah, okay. yeah, we never have a trouble there. Yeah, now that we're okay. using video, it doesn't really matter where you're at. That's right. Okay, hang on. Mm -hmm. Let me just walk over to my desk. It's a lot better this way, I think. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you actually very good. Okay. Uh, may, maybe, you know, maybe the connection had something to do with it. So it, you sound really it good. Is, uh, I think there's a dead spot in my studio because of the wall uh, and where my internet is connected. So I've got a direct line to my internet now. Ah, so okay. The, yeah, super. No, that yeah. wall seems to pose some problems. With, got, uh, it. got it. You got but it. I generally don't have problems, but, uh, mm. you know, the whole technology is changing here. They're, they're going into... 5g here oh okay, so okay all of the tell companies are kind of telling us that you know things are going to change a bit so yeah no. No, that's hey, let me do you want me to, so we left it off there just just briefly that you were talking about the influence of the, the figure and how uh you started and then how it developed and then the mm -hmm. subtlety of it mm -hmm. and i'll just add to that okay okay mm -hmm. and we're recording now yes Okay. Well, that's, that's interesting what you're saying about this figure and how it's, how it's developed, but I still see, uh, that influence, uh, probably single most influence, uh, I think is from that childhood experience yeah. of, of the church as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we can't help but being influenced, particularly having a, a father as a, as a minister, Mm -hmm. uh, there's got to be a lot of uh, external influence on the figure uh, because in religion, of course, we've got in most religions, there's some deity there that and an icon, icon uh, mm -hmm. such as Christ or uh, in the case of Buddha or mm -hmm. whatever, you've got this sort of strong, strong influence. Mm -hmm. And I see this uh, as 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 important and you can you can really uh in my opinion you can really uh how would i say it uh you you would understand a person and their culture mm -hmm. by simply looking at their art if they're using particularly you know religious iconography mm -hmm. uh, and, and a good example of that is for example the thai uh in their buddhist imagery they mm -hmm. They love it, and and it's often uh, it, it gets somewhere involved in their work. Mm -hmm. The Indian community, uh, right. particularly from India, they have a very strong iconography. Right. Uh, and as you say, Latino, uh, Mexican culture, South American, we all have these little icons. And the one thing that I, the, and even in America, with you know, it's its own religion. Uh, in the far right or whichever you might want to say. But in Canada, where I think our religion, mm -hmm. <laughs> to be honest with you, was environment. I think we've all, uh, we've grown up, you know, uh, fairly uh, inspired by our environment. I mean, you can't talk to a Canadian on any given day without talking about the weather. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> It always pops up in the conversation. You could be talking about cars mm -hmm. and weather will come up in the cars, you know? <laughs> so we have our religion, I think, 
Mm -hmm. uh, half joking aside, is, is space and environment. Look at who we're producing some of the leading photographers and environmentalists and climatologists. Uh, mm -hmm. We're very concerned with that. So that, in a sense, almost in a way kind of relates to your figure. Uh, mm -hmm. The figure being a spiritual side. You, yeah. my friend, are highly spiritual. I feel yeah, it. Absolutely. I think everyone feels this mm -hmm. when they when they get to know you. There's an honesty. There's a uh, there's a belief. Right. You hold a certain confidence and belief. Right. Right. And I think uh, we see that in your work when that figure and that that figure I think is so uh, from the early childhood influence. Yeah, absolutely. Now, yeah, and then I take my work now, and there's my, as it were, religion, mm -hmm. which is the environment, and I've and that's been important for me. Uh, and why I don't know, and I don't really know the influence other than what I said earlier. I wanted to be on a plane and flying mm -hmm. anywhere, but you know, so yeah, uh, it's, it's it's very interesting, and I can I can feel your history in your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and no, you know, totally. Totally. And something that, for example, to me, uh, you know, as I paint like these figures and uh, the aspect of spirituality is totally present there. And uh, for me, you know, I always said like the paintings um, are, um, are about a moment versus or are more about a presence versus a likeness of an individual. Right. And, and the right. way I best describe it is like when the, this, this, what I've, you know, in my case, I would think of it as the spiritual part of it. You know, this presence, this energy that we all carry, where I, you know, I could be quietly reading a magazine in, in a room by myself. And if my wife walks in the room without making any noise, I would feel that somebody's there. And then, you know, I turn and there, there she is. Or sometimes I think it has happened to all of us that you are, you are driving and you are at the stop sign and waiting for the light to go green. And you, you feel like somebody's watching you and you turn to the side and certainly the person that, you know, in the next car is like staring at you. Like, whoa, you know, it feels so weird. That's very true. Yeah. Well, we're all energy, are we not? Yes, and exactly. What, what we translate our energy yeah, into and, the work we produce. Yeah, and that is, that is kind of like what fascinates me. And that's why like my figures are more about, they're not about the likeness of the individual, but more about the, its presence, you know, it's, it's command yeah. of, of that space. Yeah. And as individuals, I think all of us, whether we're painters or not, mm -hmm. we can walk into a room of, uh, you know, Sergio Gomez paintings. And mm -hmm. for some reason, one painting mm -hmm. grabs us as an attention, you know, it, it, it demands us to go to it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why we collect art. We look right. at a painting. There might be 15 canvases on the wall, all of the same kind of uh, similar application or, uh, or, or, you know, theme. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, one canvas grabs us mm. compositionally, but it does it more from spiritual. I think that there's there a canvas speaks and it will speak to maybe one person only. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that person finds it, right? You know? yeah. uh, and I'm, I'm constantly as like you are. I think you know when the when a when a painting has the right energy, right? When it speaks to you and it tells you of something, it might make you sad, mm -hmm. might make you happy. Uh, you might feel, you know, really alive looking at that painting. Another painting might just sort of turn you off and make right. you angry, you know? Right, uh, right. And I think we all feel that we all, we're all human. We're all energy. We, we translate our energy mm -hmm. uh, as individuals onto the work we do. Right. Particularly yeah, totally. in the painters. Yeah. I think. Oh, absolutely. And one question I want to ask you, you know, uh, is, uh, we, you know, speaking about energy and spirituality and so, so, so forth. The color red, I think that's a color that, uh, uh, you know, it, it has a special place in your work and certainly also in mine. Um, something about red and, and of course, you know, red, we can associate with a lot of things we have talking been talking about too. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, and, and, you know, the question of 
uh, red, you know, how do you see red in your work? So I don't even know exactly what's the question, but just, you know, tell me about red in your work. Oh, I can tell you that. Because since well, I was like, you know, just before you, you answered like the first thing that I, that I encountered when I saw your work, you know, 20 years ago, I walked in and there was this beautiful red painting and, uh, and that red just stuck in my head for many, many years. So tell me about red. Wow. Well, that's a, sorry, I've got a motorcycle going by me. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's the problem with living in the downtown area. Uh, yeah, you know, the red is, is I'm constantly asked about that red. And, and I'll tell you, uh, uh, I had to actively at one point sort of get myself out of that because I became kind of comfortable with the idea of doing red. It would be like your, your figures being exactly the same. Uh, yeah. You know, every painting. You just simply have to say, okay, enough's enough. I think I'll I have to <laughs> yeah. move out of that transition. The red actually is a, you know, I find humor in a lot of stuff. And, you know, even in the dark work that I produce, I'll find something that's kind of uh, a silver lining in the darkness is the happiness or the funniness of it. Mm -hmm. And I, my red started really simply by, uh, by accident. And I had a dog that was, uh, you know, 170 pound Malamute. He's, you know, these really Alaskan dogs, you know, and uh, <clears throat> it was my sister's dog, actually. And I opened the door to, or she opened the door from her van, uh, just, it was, she was coming down for the, the sh for the show that I was going to be putting on, but the paintings hadn't dried yet. So they were all in the backyard of my house, mm -hmm. uh, drying in the sun. And uh, Norton was the dog, and he saw the cat, and he took <laughs> off after the cat, and the cat barreled across the paintings, and Norton hit every painting on that <laughs> with one paw each. Oh, wow. And these were five-foot paintings, and these were relatively large even uh -huh. at that time. Uh, and this was my first exhibition ever. <laughs> oh, <little And>, mugs. <laughs> so where he had hit the paintings, he had left big dints in the, in the paintings. Uh -huh. So the only way I could fix it was to add these little red lines. <laughs> okay. Because they just happened to be sort of so perfectly placed. Uh -huh. I thought, well, you know, here's the humor in tragedy. Yes. So I took a little, a little brush and I added in these three little red lines mm -hmm. where his, his paw had hit. And I almost wanted people to focus in on that because that was the light side of the painting. That was the, that was the story now. Right. It was no longer about the original intent for the painting. Now it became slightly humorous. Right. And that, that actually, that little tragedy, and it was a split second tragedy, tragedy mm -hmm. uh, actually became something that became a signature. Mm. And so uh, people would always inquire, what are those little red lines? And I did them as a signature for a decade or more. Yeah. Uh, and my work has always hit, particularly in the 90s and even up to about 2006, there was always some element of a, a line of red somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and in some cases, the entire painting was entirely red. And then there was a line of, you know, black or white. Or the color, yeah. So it was kind of a balance. And that's, mm -hmm. that's really where it came from. But at one point, mm -hmm. I think everybody was just kind of expecting red. Yeah. You know, yeah. I... I, I don't know how many times I had my reps, you know, say, Hey, can you reproduce that red painting? That you Give did? me more red. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, Oh, I can't do another red painting. <laughs> and I had to expand upon that because, uh, otherwise I was just dying. You know, uh -huh. it was just something that it was, it was becoming, I was replicating paintings and that's yeah. for the artist, as you know, hmm. is just simply that's, that's just artistic suicide really yeah. Uh, yeah when we start just finding something that and there are many people that do it well <laughs> believe me right. uh, but uh for me i couldn't do it i was just dying inside i just couldn't paint another red painting right. and i'm only just in the in the last what do the uh, last month really mm -hmm. uh using red again so Which it's is... been taking that long and that my friend was influenced by you <laughs> Which now I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. You, you recently painted a, a, an 
an unbelievable painting and you did it in a church. Yes. And you added as a final kind of uh, element to the painting, you, you added this beautiful shot of red. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was so well placed. Uh, it made my, the hair on the back of my neck stand up. It was so well done. Thank you. But, and here we go. Here's, here's sort of the whole picture now. Because here's a, here's a painter I respect. Mm -hmm. Painting a new painting, which you showed me in process. You right. did it in a church. Mm -hmm. So there's the big influence right there. Right. You're, that's your comfort level. You created something unbelievably good because you were in your comfort zone, yes. I think. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yeah, you know, that's very interesting. And, and for our friends who are listening, you know, the, throughout that process of me working on that painting and then the next series, you know, uh, I will send you pictures uh, because we are, you know, we're always chatting on Facebook, even though we are like, I don't know, almost like 12 hours uh, distance on, on time, you know, but Malaysia versus Chicago. But, uh, you know, I'm like, hey, Drew, tell me what you're making. And then you're like, tell me what you're making. So it's funny that we, we have been visiting each other's studio, even we have actually never met in physically in person, right? So it's been really fun uh, relationship of uh, or looking behind the scenes, uh, like no, you know, like nobody else is uh, it has is doing on our studio. So you saw the process, yeah, of me working on that painting, uh, which started as a uh, as a performance. So, so here's here's how the whole story. So the this church in Chicago is called Soul City Church, a really progressive church. They added a, a, a section to the building for something called House of Hope, you know, to help uh, people. Uh, in the community, very community based and uh, and things like that. So, you know, they commissioned for me to do a, a painting and they gave, you know, they said, hey, you can, pretty much you can do whatever you want kind of thing. So like the perfect type of commission, right? I didn't have to show a sketch or anything. You just had to make something. They had a, an opening event for this new wing of the building in which, um, you know, they asked me if I could start the painting there, you know, the show the process. So I went and I put my big canvas 60 inches by 60 inches. So it's quite a fairly large yeah. work. And uh, I, I stretched it and I started working there, um, as you said, and, uh, you know, people were walking through and uh, it started totally different uh, of a painting. Um, and then that was, that event happened. It was like a three hour event sort of thing. Uh, rolled the, the canvas up, brought it back to my studio and then continue working it. And, and by the time it ended, it was a completely different painting, but definitely rooted in what I did in the live session. Um, so, you know, there's, there's definitely a connection there with, you know, kind of my childhood upbringing to the work that I'm doing right now. Right. And, and I, you know, I didn't even think about that until <laughs> you bring it up right now, which, uh, well, I also see the, and you, you were, you cool. were, uh, you, you started creating with a, a musician, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. so the, there was a musician playing. Yeah, the, uh, uh, she was playing the cello, I believe. Um, and uh, it was it was really fun. It was really, really okay, fun. So there's another question I need to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, does, in, does music play an influence in your work? It's funny because it, it has, you know, like I know for many artists, and uh, I don't know about you, but like, you know, there's a, there's like certain music is strictly, uh, you know, really influential. For me, it has never been a, a total direct connection. Like uh, when I'm in the studio, I could very well listen into a podcast or to a YouTube video or something that I just had an interest on, or it could be music, uh, sometimes in Spanish, sometimes in English, sometimes it's you know, maybe classical. So there's, I don't have a, a specific music that, but there has to be some noise. It has to be some sound, I should say, not noise, but there has to be some sound. I cannot work in silence. The, every, you know, since I can remember, there's always some sort of sound that, that, I, that I feel like gives me company in the process. Right. Well, that's an interesting element again. You know, if we start, if I, I mean, I, I don't want to assume things, but I, I can I can put the sort of two and two together here. You've got, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the idea of family. I mean, I know your family is big, important to right. you, uh, and there's always noise in family. Right, right. So right. the comfort level knowing that you've got 
uh, this kind of noise, this ambient noise. Exactly. Uh, whether it be music or someone, you know, banging on a, uh, you know, banging a hammer or a nail or, or yelling right. or, or, you know, laughing. Uh, right. That kind of thing is, again, plays a part in, I believe, in the <laughs> final preparation of your work. Mm-hmm. It shows. It shows. In it. And I don't know how to describe it, but it does. Mm-hmm. I see it. And I saw the process that you started with the church. Mm-hmm. Then you brought it home. You started working on it uh, in your studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you you updated me regularly. And we had these conversations. And I think there's influences from all that, mm-hmm. including maybe the red that I used to put in my work. Oh, yes, I, absolutely. I think you, you, would, you said to me, uh, look at that. There's the Drew Harris red. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. And actually, I'm, thank you for bringing it up because as I was talking about this, and I, I totally forgot about the, the red part of the question, <laughs> So, <laughs> and, and, which actually that was the main question. And uh, I, I, uh, I totally forgot about that. Yes, so um, because we were talking about red, and so red has always been a very special color for me. It's like my favorite color. But uh, I'm very peculiar when I use it in my paintings, and uh, it's, it's almost like I'm afraid sometimes to use it, you know, in in, in a work, mm-hmm. and uh, and 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 maybe because uh, you know, as you said, uh, I don't want it to become a device, right? That you know, all of a sudden that's that's what completes it. But uh, mm-hmm. and and uh, in this painting, you know, after of course. Uh, being you know, influenced by your work and the things that you were doing too. And and by at that time, if you remember, I you know, had just curated your exhibition to uh, uh-huh. online, uh, the Peninsula series. So by the way, our friends can go check it out if you want to see uh, Drew's virtual exhibition uh, at sergiogomezcurates.net. Highly recommended. Beautiful show. And uh, so that your work was so fresh in my head. And, I, you know, like I said, I, I always appreciate the color red in, in your work. So... I said when well, I'm going to bring some of that Drew red into this work, <laughs> it honors that uh, that influence of you, and it also has the added meaning in which this painting was like this figure that is a standing figure, a white figure, like in the center of the yeah. composition. It's very symmetrical, uh, with open arms. You know, this called this place called the uh, the House of Hope. So red is a it's a symbol of blood, of struggle, power, and and bleeding, and uh, so this red is almost like it's drippy, it's, it's, it's bleeding, and um, uh, so to me it has like you know, and it's at the bottom lower right hand side of the work, uh, under the figure that's emerging and, and it's uplifting. So to me it's like, you know, uh, uh, we all as human beings, you know, we carry our, our struggles or pains or suffering, and uh, and there's there's always hope. You know, as long as we're alive, but it's always hope. This so is I, another very interesting aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, now we're talking more about we're talking about influences. You yeah. know, you and I uh, during that exhibition that I did with you. Thank you again. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was fantastic, a great experience because it got me to look at my work closely and you to look at my work closely mm-hmm. and clearly have an influence. Yeah. One of the things that, uh, if you recall, there were a number of paintings with the word. In it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because I the Peninsula series is based on where I grew up, mm-hmm. on a place called Hope Bay. So the word hope for me, in using it in the word or in the titles, meant two different things. I think we were, you know, being in a pandemic, we we need the we need positive words mm-hmm. rather than the negativity of right. what our news might tell us. So hope was a, a word that, I, that I, I felt inclined to use because it helped me believe that I can get through this pandemic yeah. and mm-hmm. then get home to Hope Bay, where I, where I love, in Canada. Right. So, so those, again, you know, there's the subtle influences. Now, if I can add to that, because your influences in the uh, diaphanous bodies Mm-hmm. Paintings, yeah. you know that you, you put. Uh, I hope you said that correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, again, you showed me the process in which you were working, mm-hmm. and I saw again something spiritual come out of these pieces mm-hmm. with the figure, you know, half cut off or, mm-hmm. or rising or lowering mm-hmm. something spiritual in those works. 
-hmm. And there's an intensity to the application that you used. Mm -hmm. The base paintings were, again, we have a sort of a mutual respect for one another's work. And I think we mm -hmm. unconsciously, uh, you know, take elements of those and yeah. put them in our work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, with our group at Art Next Level, there's a number of artists there that, uh, of course, we're influenced by. We see their work, uh, mm -hmm. we see how their their applications are and the colors, use of color and that kind of, and we can't help but, you know, not go to bed at night and, mm -hmm. and unconsciously think this. So we get up in the morning and we start working or uh, whatever we paint. Mm -hmm. Those influences remain from a visual perspective. I see your work in my work now. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's very odd. And I don't consciously go out to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that could lead us onto a whole other five hours of conversation about how <laughs> yeah. we influence one another. Yeah. But I think it's it's so it's so unconscious. Right. Uh, we we're not even aware of it until someone points it out. Right. So, yeah. One of the things that you introduced me to is like this uh, liquid uh, glass medium, which I had never used. And uh, in this series, you know, that show is directly, you know, comes from your introduction uh, in or making me aware of this medium and how you use it and me starting to exploring with it and having so much fun with it that, uh, you know, that that's what created without that, this series would have looked totally different. Yeah. And, and again, this is how we, I, I, I love the, the fact that, that, that many of us in our next level, uh, mm -hmm. and, and let me talk about that for a second after uh, in a mm -hmm. moment, but the, the influences that we have, uh, are so great. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, we introduce ourselves to, to when, when, a, when a good dialogue happens, when there's good energy between mm -hmm. artists, mm -hmm. we don't have a fear of, uh, of sharing. We, right. you know, there are certain cultures, uh, such as the one I live in here in a way, there's not a lot of dialogue between, between artists. Mm -hmm. And when you do, it's a very special one. You know, it's a very, mm -hmm. we can talk technique. Yeah. And we can be introduced. And, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm a proponent of is mm -hmm. of sharing ideas. I really don't care uh, how people take my, you know, uh, influence, such as materials and that kind of thing. I'm, when I find something great, why not shout it to the world? You know, why not let everybody else know? Because, you know, I'm not one of my own. We're we're a we're a human population. Mm -hmm. We should be sharing, mm -hmm. and we are now. You know, a pandemic has created a, a whole new element of sharing in a way that right. we've never seen. So, right. in many ways, a bad thing came became a good thing. But in the case of the materials, you know, I was so happy to see that. In fact, you took just that little minor influence of uh, of a product. Mm -hmm. that I recommended and then you started using it and look what you produced. Mm -hmm. And I think that that, that takes us on the next rung of the ladder. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're building up knowledge and material uh, in processes. And I think that that's, that's as important a part of the story. Right. As is the final piece. Absolutely. You know, it, it's how we got here. And, and we can see this through the history of art, you know, uh, artists who have worked together or have influenced each other uh, just by, even by just m mere knowing, no, knowing, uh, knowing each other or about each other in, in, in some aspects, sometimes, uh, by competing against each other, you know, there's a, yeah, there's yeah. a thing, there's a, yeah, there's a thing, a really wonderful thing about competition that I think it, it has its place where it could really be, really be uh, good for, for us. I remember like when I was in art school, for example, uh, my friend Javier, which I mentioned earlier and I, you know, we were best friends and we were also always competing with each other in a way that we wanted to push. I wanted to push myself to, uh, you know, to, to his level and he to my level all the time. So there was like this, this, this friendly war, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, if I did something good, he would then outdo it and, or, or, or vice versa, you know, in some way or okay. fashion. Okay. Yeah. And even though our works were very different, um, 
but there was there was this really cool uh, synergy between you know I I wanted to to be really good because my friend was really good. And, yeah, uh, and I, yeah, isn't that a great uh, mm-hmm. isn't that a great thing when you can uh, you you can level up with someone yeah. that you admire uh, yeah. and uh, and eventually we do. Most artists will find that one person whether they know them or not mm-hmm. that they yeah. can level up and say, you know, I'm I'm producing work at this level and i'm right i'm happy and it's because of a, a positive influence right you know? right uh, yeah and, and it was a fun support where you know uh, sometimes let's say we both enter a show and he would win a prize you know he, we <laughs> would make jokes like oh man you know just suck and why not but of course with respect that uh, you know and then then vice versa right if i won an award you know and and it was really really a fun push and pull you know and and uh, really pushing ourselves and are you still in touch with him now uh yeah yeah we are not as much of course as we were in the school but we're still friends uh, and yeah. uh, he's he's one of the artists who helped me uh, start my gallery so it was you know we have uh enjoy a great friendship and, well you know we you know i think that uh, to add into that conversation, this art next level that we, mm-hmm. that you of course, uh, guide us on, uh, and I'm just a participant. But where I, I think what what's interesting is that we're, we're we start a dialogue, or you start the dialogue with mm-hmm. a lot of the members, mm-hmm. and then we all sort of add in our little experience. And one of the one yeah. of the things uh, you asked uh, in this past week was, you know, what what artist influenced you the most? And I, and I replied back to it. Uh, and I came from it from a different perspective because mm-hmm. other members might say, you know, Rembrandt or another right. member might say a Rothko or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think all of, all of them in, influenced us, but I think the more, more important part of influence is by the people themselves. I want to emulate someone that's good, that mm-hmm. someone's, that is honest mm-hmm. you know uh that has got a lifestyle that i like mm-hmm. and we kind of attain uh you know influences based on the things that we desire right, right. I, I desire to 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 be good and to have honest thought and to be care about the environment so when i look at some of our members work mm-hmm. you know I can see the influences there and we've become mm-hmm. good colleagues, all of us, right. because right. of that positive influence. And I think that that's very important. And like you and I, I'm not painting like you, but I'm, I'm influenced by the, the positivity that you bring. Right. Uh, at where I can go to another artist, maybe here locally or even back in, in Canada and get no response whatsoever. Mm-hmm. As someone that I've, you know, that perhaps influenced me as a young painter, mm-hmm. I can now try to communicate with it. I just hit a, a, a dead end. Mm-hmm. I, they just will not communicate. But that's them. That's right. not me. So okay. I find and seek out the people that influence me the most. And I can share them everything of my knowledge, right. all my materials, uh, like you do with, a, with me. Like mm-hmm. we're just, this is a great dialogue because right. it, it, is rare to find. Mm-hmm. So, totally, very nice. <laughs> totally agree. Totally agree, Drew. Yeah. I have a question that I've been really dying to ask you, um, okay. and and I think it will also help a lot of our friends listening too, um, because you're an artist who has achieved a lot of a lot of things in in your career. Uh, you've been at it longer than I have, uh, so I, I look up to you in that respect as well. Um, mm-hmm. The things that you have achieved. Uh, as an artist and um, opportunities that you have had also as well. Um, The question is, how do you challenge yourself not to get stagnant or complacent with the work? You know, uh, as you become a mature artist, there, you know, there are devices, there are things that we can always employ and use, you know, with the experience that we're gaining on, on, on resolving the the image or or you yeah. know I know this will work for sure and so we can and, and something that it, it kind of goes back to something that you said earlier like the creative suicide right you say I don't want to when you talk about the red paintings I don't want right. to be creative suicide and just always doing red paintings because you know because you know you can make them beautiful and you know you can do a red painting every day and they will mm-hmm. be all good you know they will be really good so how do you challenge yourself 
so that your work doesn't get stuck on something or you as an artist feel complacent with what you have achieved, right. you know, and the knowledge that you have gained in your studio. Well, I think it goes right back to this creative suicide, you know, the, mm -hmm. the red paintings. I mean, it, 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 at that time, when I made that decision, I made a decision to, to move forward and up mm -hmm. rather than uh, stay where I was, which was comfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can do a Drew Harris red painting better than anyone. Mm -hmm. But, you know, did I want to? No, I didn't want to because I wasn't being challenged. Mm -hmm. So uh, it would be like anything, whether it's in business or in, in running, you know, you're always trying to get a little bit better, you know, a bit better time uh, and, and get greater enjoyment from it. So part of my life is really, you know, while there's been difficult moments, Mm -hmm. I've had a tremendous amount of joy and, and I, I revel in the fact that uh, I'm doing something new. So when a, when a painting or something new, a new influence, a new idea, a new series work comes out mm -hmm. from me, it's very well thought out. I think these things through, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a, as an example, the, the Peninsula series. Yeah. which I've just done it is probably one of my best series ever. I, I have to say there's, there's two series that, that came out in my career when I had those, one of those aha moments okay. that said, I'm, I, I've moved ahead. I've moved forward. I've challenged myself. I'm doing something that inspires me again. You know, mm -hmm. uh, when you're not inspired, you're not inspiring anybody else either. So right. you would know this more than anyone I know. Is that we have to continually progress and learn and get inspired by whether it be new technologies or painting. So this series for me was inspiring because I had sat around for about a year here, uh, as you know, and I think this was in the first email I sent to you. Mm -hmm. I just said, you know, I'm bored silly. I have no idea how to communicate with people here. Mm -hmm. No one's communicating. We're in a pandemic mm -hmm. or the beginning of it pandemic and um I, I just have to get a new influence so that's when i hooked up with you know you and art next level mm -hmm. but and that inspired the painting series the peninsula series because it it made me i realized in these paintings mm -hmm. that this was my dream this mm -hmm. is what i wanted this is what would make me happy going home going home to my own country i haven't been home for so long and I, and so the influence was the landscape. Mm -hmm. And while we, and I live on two peninsulas, I live on Peninsula, Bruce Peninsula in Canada. And I live here on Malaysia, uh, which is Peninsular Malaysia. So the Peninsula series all of a sudden popped up and it was an interesting idea right there. It, there was a, there was a kind of giving back to each of space, to mm -hmm. my home and my new home here and so this was a this was challenging for me and this is what this is how each of my series comes about i just had something clicks in in the algorithm you know in my head and says okay this is now this is a good idea this is a good idea and when you have a good idea when you know it's a good idea you will work harder to achieve the final results mm. and this series for me uh, push me in new mediums. Uh, it pushed sizes. It pushed uh, uh, the subtleties of the paint. It mm -hmm. pushed new colors. And, and in fact, the, the very thing that I really did not want to become was a landscape painter ever. Mm -hmm. I just had this sort of fear of becoming a landscape painter. And that could be because of my mom was. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't want to follow in that track. So uh, this series allowed me to sort of be an abstract landscape painter. Hmm. And I dealt with those demons in a way. I dealt with loss. I dealt with, uh, with longing and desire all in this series. And that's what moved me ahead. And now those, that series is moving me ahead in a new series. So I'm continually pushing the envelope. Hmm. 
Otherwise, I, I, I'd end up doing red paintings. <laughs> red, yeah. And I would be bored silly. <laughs> no, but that is that is awesome. I, I love that because uh, I think uh, I, I, I think it is a uh, it is a trap that uh, we could if we are not aware or if we are not constantly uh, looking back. It's a trap that we can all as artists can fall into where uh, it becomes comfortable. It becomes it be the the thing that we know that made it work. Um, it could become the trap that prevents us from growing and and and, and moving yeah. forward. Yeah, mm. and and you as a as a uh, this is, again, I think this is why I respect how you produce your work, not only as a painter, mm -hmm. uh, but as a as a business person. And I think that there's some similarity there as well in the business life. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't reinvent, you die. That's simply absolutely that's just business. I mean, we get bored of of the same old products, we have to reinvent. This is why Apple does it. This is why, you know, tech companies do it. This is why Art Next Level always builds something new. Right. And, you know, it inspires, right? Right, absolutely. So, and I think you, you, I saw this in you in the past, since November, I've seen this change in how you're producing your work, the applications, mm -hmm. the scale is different. Uh, you got away from the from from doing the paperwork per mm -hmm. se and, and doing it uh, on you know structured canvases, which right. and then becoming uh, you know, almost three dimensional, mm -hmm. uh, which is taking your art to a next level. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, to tell you the truth, you know, uh, I was getting into a kind of comfortable place, and and I was kind of being um, not very pleased with the work. And you know this this kind of brought to me some new elements to work with, some new ideas. Absolutely. And now I feel like a kid with a new toy, right? And I think that that is uh, that's something really that uh, I'm looking yeah. forward. Mm -hmm. Question I have for you then? Yeah. Is, uh, I mean, we're when we when we find something, we strike upon something uh, new and, and inspiring, whether that be a piece of music or art or some mm -hmm. technique that we've done. Do you find that, uh, and there's a reason I'm going to ask this question, because uh, I'll explain my end of it too. The, mm -hmm. the influence that we're having in our artwork and our sort of spiritual connection towards our work. So, mm -hmm. in, for example, the diaphanous bodies, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful series of work Thank and you. it should be celebrated. And I think you knew that. You already know that it's a good series. You, you, mm -hmm. you brought something new, as you say to right. this series does that and this is talking metaphorically in a way uh or maybe a little bit too deep but how does that affect your relationship with a your family for example hmm. having produced this new techniques and mm -hmm. how do you see the change in the in the family do the, are you are you more inspired Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't imagine you not being inspired because you're just kind of an inspiring guy. But I, I mean, I think you would, I, I know for myself, if I, mm -hmm. if I finish something that is, that I feel really good about, mm -hmm. my yeah. whole spirit lifts yeah. to another level. That's a great question. And uh, nobody had ever asked me that about that. So I think that's a great question. Uh, and so here, here's what, what was interesting. So, um, at home, right, uh, my studio is in the lower level and I have a door so I can close my door and I could just be on my own even though the family is doing whatever they're doing upstairs and I could be I here isolated for, you know, for all the time, you know, and, and uh, they kind of, uh, my kids, they don't come and they bother me. They're, they're now teenagers, you know, 16 and 19 and, and so on. Um, but throughout this series, you know, something that I did uh, which I really enjoyed was, uh, you know, as I, as you know, this series kind of, I had my moments where also I struggled, like with like even continuing, like or I did. I sometimes I, I would message you like I just hate what's you know how are they looking right now, right? And uh, so as I finish, you know, a benchmark, uh, let's call it a benchmark in in the process of this of this body of work, 
I would invite sometimes my daughter or my son to say, hey, can, can I show you something? And I would bring them to my studio to see them uh, and to uh, and just tell me, you know, what they think. Um, so I did that like three or four times in the process of this work. And um, and particularly my daughter, she, she loves she loves the uh, painting and so on. Uh, my son loves art too, but he does more like digital. But, I, you know, I would sometimes, hey, come and check this out. Uh, and my wife, Janina, she... You know, when I'm working in the studio, you know, if I'm working late, for example, she will come and say good night, and so she would always see the process and uh, and and look at the work. But um, but uh, for this whole series, you know, uh, I really enjoy that the the kids were able to see it throughout. Yeah. And then when the show came about, so uh, you know, we had the opening reception on last Friday, and um, so. You know, now my kids are older, so, you know, they don't have to come to every show or every opening. It's, it's their choice, you know. When they were kids, we took yeah. them to so many that uh, they got to a point like, yeah, Dad, I don't want to go to another opening. <laughs> but uh, so now as they get older, you know, uh, you know, we're trying to figure out the timing and who's going to go when and so on. So I told my kids, hey, guys, you know, you don't have to go. You know, you've already seen the paintings if you don't want to. You know, and they both said, no, no, we want to be there. We want to go there. We want to go to your opening. Okay. And, and they came to the opening because now my son drives, so he can drive himself. Uh, and uh, uh, so they came later and they, you know, they had some great conversations with people. And uh, it was really rewarding for me, you know, to see now as they have the choice, they already saw the paintings here at home, but they still wanted to give me their um, their support, you know, uh, by being there, showing up to to my opening. And, um, you know, they almost... That not make you realize that maybe they they kind of absorb the positive energy that you did in these works for example. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And they're very they they are they want to celebrate as well. As in yeah. uh be there to show the, the, the support for their father. Uh, right. That they otherwise have said, you know, no, we don't want to go to an opening. Right. But now right. they're there saying they're championing you on because right. they know how good you feel about it. Yeah. Work. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I totally. Yeah, they, 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 uh, they see the excitement. I mean, because especially this particular series, as they were drying, because you know this this medium takes yeah. a little bit longer to dry than typically. That's right. So, and in the lower level of the house, uh, you know, their conditioning heats the room uh, quite a bit. So, it's a, my my studio is a bit bit cold. So, once I finished the paintings, I took them and I had them in the living room. You know, where next to a window, so they would dry faster and better. Uh, yes. so, so they had access, you know, while we were all eating in the kitchen and so on, you know, they would pass by and see them, you know, they were like part of the furniture for a while because they, they were there for a few days. So, uh, yeah. so, but, so, you know, it, it, it was nice that I was able to, uh, to share that enthusiasm with them, which is not, yeah. not, always, not always is the case. You know, I, I see this is my work, right? It, it's like, like my job in a way, you know, and they have their own things and their own stuff, but it was nice to, to share that enthusiasm with him. Yeah, and I think that there's a certain clarity of mind that comes when you when you produce something uh, decent, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it and it translates into the conversations that you have. Uh, you know, uh, as an example, this conversation right now for me mm -hmm. is, is is slightly animated in a way because I'm I, I feel very good with the work that I'm producing right now, mm -hmm. I, and I. It, but had I not been producing work, had I just been sitting around and, you know, being lazy and not producing, I get anxious. And that relates to the relationships. So my relationship with my family, my mm -hmm. wife, for example, might not be as sort of animated. Mm -hmm. uh, my relationship with our group might be as not as animated, uh, mm -hmm. primarily because I don't feel good mm -hmm. about the work I'm producing. But mm -hmm. when I do produce something that is, in my mind, mm -hmm. spectacular, mm -hmm. you know, it shows in how I relate to others. And I think that this, yeah. again, is the energy of a painting. Right. And it translates into the individual. We, we carry it with us. We are the creators. Okay. So we've created something amazing. And we want to really talk about it. Or not talk about it, but right. it... it, it it kind of it's a it's a flow of energy between the painting and the artist. Yeah, that we can leave the studio 
and we're right. as positive as we were when we, you know, right. realized that that painting was special. Yeah, there's a, there's a there's a fun fact today that happened because I was at the gallery today giving tours to, you know, some guests came to see the show, and uh, there's there's one painting there in the that is my least favorite. You know, there's one that at the end I was like, eh, I don't know if I want to put it in the show, but then, okay, I'll put it. Oh, and, the most successful. One. Yeah, and and in the opening, a lot of people like that painting, uh, and uh, you know they commented on it. So they, it's, I was telling my intern today; she was working with me at the gallery. Like, you know, it's like since the opening day, people are starting to convince me that it's a good painting. You know, even though I, I didn't think it was that good, and um, and I'm started to believe in myself. They're brainwashing me, and then. <laughs> Then she showed me something that she saw on the painting, like, oh, you know, and like, and you're not helping because you're now convincing me even more, you know, that, that, uh, so it, it's, uh, uh, the, the influence of others, I, I think is, is just another aspect that I think is interesting. And I wanted to ask you, you know, in particularly, uh, in your career, you know, as you look back at your career, uh, tell me about the, the, you know, we talk about the, those who are close to us, right? But how about the influences, the voices of those, who are not to us, who sometimes may be critical with our work. Tell me what what uh, effect has had that on your work over time, both the praise of others and also perhaps rejection or uh, or not response from others. Yeah, well, that's that's a that's a, of course that's part of the artist's life is we mm -hmm. have the rejection and we have the positive you know reinforcement. Is that correct? Yeah, so we exactly. uh, and we have to have both. Uh, but it sometimes takes us a lot longer to, to handle the rejection than it does right. the exception, you know, the or the mm -hmm. accepted and the praise. Uh, the, you know, a lot of people won't tell you or tell me uh, that they like my work. They won't come right out and tell me. They just are too shy or they uh, and they will surely won't tell me that it's bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, been a, over the years, I mean, I've had my share of, of rejections, and I wrote about this uh, in our Art Next level, mm -hmm. the idea of a, uh, what I thought was a good concept, you mm -hmm. know, bringing a show here in, in the early 90s, uh, and realizing that uh, I got panned bad, because mm -hmm. I didn't understand what I was doing with this iconography, which takes me back to the religion aspect mm -hmm. of our initial conversation. Mm -hmm. that I was at that point kind of looking for a spiritual connection to something. Mm -hmm. And I was using the iconography of sort of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Of course, no one, I, I, no one even reminded me that I was bringing it into an entirely Muslim population. So I was like, all of a sudden, what I loved and had the spirit for what, what the influences were, mm -hmm. were totally rejected here, but not in a bad way. I mean, it was just something that they, the, that particular uh, population, yeah. wouldn't support in a way because it's it's against what they do. So I didn't defend, but I I couldn't defend my work mm -hmm. either. So I walked away with a lot of rejection. At that point, I was like, I was I was unsure whether I could actually do another show. Mm -hmm. so, but I had to I had to come over that, uh, mm -hmm. and. I had to, I had to be conscious of the environment, of mm -hmm. the religious, socio-economic environment, the different cultures. I had to put a lot of thought into that before I, I created the next body of work. Mm -hmm. And then when I came back, I think, uh, I think in two thousand six, uh, I did one of the best series ever in my career at that, that time it was it was the comeback show it was the mm. show that that just everybody praised mm. i got media i got attention i got television i got international press it was fantastic and it was done uh as something where i had to go back to my roots of a, as a painter yeah. and talk about the environment wow this is called the weatherworks series uh and it it would gained such praise. Uh, I, I people still talk about that series. They still remind me of that series to, today in 2021. They will say uh, the first I saw your work was at you know the Weatherworks series. The Weatherworks, that's and, really cool. And the Weatherworks came about by accident. And at the same time, 
I think, again, perhaps the energy that I was exuding at the time and the energy in the work was so positive and so inspired that I ended up meeting my wife wow. uh, <laughs> at the gallery during that show. And I think, again, like I said before, it's the energy that we create not only through our work, but the individual himself. Right. So I had to come across adversity to, to gain confidence again. Right. Yeah. And since then, you know, there have been issues. There have been issues here locally because uh, I'm a foreigner and the mm -hmm. market changed and the value of my work. Well, people started to see they, they weren't looking at me anymore for a while. Uh, and, you know, some devaluation unfairly, but it happened and it defeat, it defeated me for about two years. And I sat here wallowing in, you know, a, an incident mm -hmm. that happened that affected my buying public here. And it was unfair, but yeah. there was no retribution. I couldn't do anything about it. It was a, it was a mistake someone made and they've never corrected it. And that, that almost put me into saying, that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, again, I have a, a wife that is very supportive. Mm -hmm. I have friends internationally that are supportive. And they said, just get back on the horse, mm -hmm. do something, think it through right. Right. and do something better than you've ever done. Right. And forget all about the negativity. Mm -hmm. So this is what I have to do now. Mm -hmm. I really don't care what people think. To be honest with you, I have to do what I like first. Right. Uh, so that does that answer your question? I know. Absolutely. Long, it totally. Yeah, it, no, it totally does. It totally does. It makes total sense. And I think that's a great question. Uh, I mean, that's a great answer to the question. I love it. So, Drew, believe it or not, we've been at it for an uh, hour and 35 40. minutes or something like that. So, <laughs> we want to make sure that our friends are still awake. And um, maybe we'll wrap it up with, we'll, we'll take one last question each. How about that? And then- uh, okay, Let me start then. Let me ask. All right. So pick, pick your, uh, your okay, one. I know what I'm going to ask. Say, I have to ask this one and I'll do the same and then we'll close with that. Well, uh, I think one of the questions I would have uh, as, as an artist to an artist, mm -hmm. uh, what's next? Ooh, what's the, the, next for you? Well, next question. Yes. Well, I have a sp very specific answer about that one. Um, okay. You know, because as we uh, talk about today, my latest series, the diaphanous bodies, and and one of the reasons I like to work in series, you know, as you work in series too, is uh, I feel like when there's something to say, you cannot say it in one sentence. So to me, each painting is one sentence, right? So uh, I I need to say more, and so I think with the diaphanous series, I'm uh, scratching a surface. Uh, is the first statement, like the first paragraph, you know, this, this series, yep. this four, these 14 works. And uh, I went to one with the next paragraph. So I think I still have more to say on this. So uh, what's coming is I'm going to be working on Canvas um, versus which, as you know, is a departure for me, like typically for the last 20 years, I've been working on paper. Uh, so working on Canvas, the traditional Canvas stretch to, you know, stretched and um uh want to go a size bigger these diaphanous mm -hmm. series they're all mid-sized sort of on the smaller not too small but you know about 20 by 20s uh there's a series of them which are tall 12 by 36s and so i want to go maybe around 40 38 by 38 40 by 40s so want to want to explore the square format uh, a little bit bigger not too huge but um kind of like the the next step up and um in applications yeah with with similar application yeah. and um, just just kind of a continuity to see where it where it yeah. leads you know what it is i think uh i think there's still more to say on this series and um i feel like this show was the like the first paragraph you know excellent well you see i i it's a great i think it's a great uh answer because we all answer it similarly you know mm -hmm. we we have to progress. We get bigger. We see what the market wants in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, with your show that's currently up, you're going to see, you, you judge mm -hmm. what is, what works and what doesn't. 
and sometimes right. we need that external kind of public right. uh, judging yeah, yeah. to be able to judge exactly for ourselves how to how to step to the next chapter was was the next, next thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and i think the narrative though i think is so strong already in the diaphanous bodies that mm -hmm. you can uh, you can add to that yeah, yeah many chapters right many paragraphs and many chapters so i think my friend you are you're well on your way to doing something again that even much better than what you've already done hmm. and that's gonna be hard to beat thank <laughs> thank you so much well i have one last question for you drew as well and well, this will will finish our match <laughs> which, <laughs> which is uh which by the way by the way friends you don't want to go away before the we finish, we have also a very awesome announcement to make for you guys. But uh, the question I have for you is, uh, you are a very fun guy. You know, I never imagined you were going to be this this fun and and and, and, and exciting to talk about. Uh, there's a humor side of you, a humorous side of you. Actually, your profile picture uh, in, in your um, in your Zoom, I love it because we're, we're talking right now through just audio, no video, and your picture is one in which you are with a great smile, you know, I can imagine sitting with you one day for coffee and, you know, we're talking about deep things, but also, you know, having a great time and smiling and, and, and humor is a big part of your life. And uh, I think that also comes across in your paintings and that, that joy for life. So uh, t tell me about uh, uh, humor in your work, uh, uh, because your work is serious, but, um, but uh, you know, what, how, how does humor also affect the, the work that you do? Uh, that's a, well, that's a good question because uh, uh, I just made a comment today on an Art Next Level site about uh, storytelling. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I of remember. course, we're storytellers. So we're visual storytellers, but there has to be the back end. Mm -hmm. People will always ask, what does the title mean? You know, mm -hmm. and what does that mean? And right. you have to explain it. Uh, and humor does play a, a big part in, I think, again, I, okay, here we go. I mean, it, this is a good example of, of a well-rounded conversation. Think back to what we started with, with about influences. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Canada. Yeah. I spent my entire childhood and most of my early adult life in Canada, you know, pulled away in a, you know, closed environment for six months because of the cold in the snow that you have to have a sense of humor <laughs> you have to live with people and have a sense of humor if you don't I, in canada it can become quite nasty because there's nowhere else to go you know it's winter time well you would know this in chicago and you have a family so having humor is is a good thing but in the in the in the case of the work mm -hmm. i can I can do a painting and, and put five titles on it and each one with a different uh, reasoning behind it. And some are completely off the grid. Like they just don't relate to the piece at all. Mm. And I just did a piece mm -hmm. and our influences are from things that are, that we're watching on the news and so forth. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I did a piece that, reminded me and i don't know whether it was subconscious uh, or not but it reminded me of a little capsule a little little you know rocket capsule mm -hmm. and it just kept reappearing in this piece uh, and although the work as you say is kind of it's it's, it's abstraction it's mm -hmm. sort of serious abstraction you know as a mm -hmm. term mm -hmm. but i kept seeing this little capsule in it and mm -hmm. i couldn't get away from it so i called it when Jeff comes down to earth. Yeah. You're watching he and, and uh, the Virgin Atlantic guy, you yeah. know, head off the space. And I'm thinking, boy, you know, the, these guys have a lot of money to play. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the whole concept behind it is kind of an irony in my words. I said, when Jeff comes down to earth. And <laughs> why I wanted to say that was, you know, physically he's coming back to earth, mm -hmm. but, but also from a, from a socio sort of, I don't know, from a, from a personal point of view, these guys 
egos are so inflated by their success and their being billionaires. And I thought, it's perfect. I mean, it, it just, you can see the capsule in the painting mm -hmm. if you look hard, but put the title that way and you really see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? And I, so, and I play with it in funny because I love good writing. I like, mm -hmm. I like to be, I like to laugh. I like to yeah. see things light that are otherwise serious subject matter. Right. You know? Right. No, I, I love oh, that. In for, for a new planet, <laughs> for, a, yeah. for a planet that they're helping destroy right now. So right. I'm, I kind of go, wow, the irony is crazy. Right. Uh, right. Right. Would, would you, yeah. would you take the right to, uh, you know, if that was available to everybody, would you take the right to outer space to see the earth coming no. down? No, I got NASA for that. <laughs> 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 they can really? do it. I'm not going to take the risk. Sorry, uh, I, I, I'd rather stay on the on the ground. <laughs> on the know? ground. That's, that's why. I, again, back to why I said I wanted to be a pilot when I was young, and then I got a fear of flying. And then <laughs> it was like, well, that's ruled that one out. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, uh, like fearful. Nothing more worrying than a fearful pilot. Yes, exactly. No, that is awesome. Well, I yeah. have a, a big announcement to make, Drew, and you're part of this too. And uh, with this, we'll, we'll kind of be wrapping it up. Uh, thank, by the way, thanks to all of you guys who are still listening. If you're listening still to this point in the podcast, you're, you're a champion. I don't think I've ever done a, almost a two-hour podcast here. Uh, hey. So, yeah, it's our first. And uh, who knows, might be, there might be more coming. Uh, you know, if you guys enjoy this, this conversation, let us know. But uh, coming... Uh, August 28 and 29, uh, we're going to have a virtual retreat. So you hit it correctly, a virtual retreat. So no matter where you are in the world, you can participate. Uh, we're calling it We Evolve. And uh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be uh, three of us. will be uh, Drew, uh, who you uh, heard today, uh, will be my wife, Dr. Ina Gomez, and myself. We're going to talk about mindset. Uh, we can talk about the studio practice and marketing, which is pretty much three big areas in our artist's life. So Dr. Ina Gomez is going to talk about mindset, you know, how to free yourself from self-sabotage uh, and, and you know, your uh, the way you set up your, your mind to succeed. Uh, then Drew is going to approach, uh, as you heard him today, uh, you know, so eloquently, you know, the studio practice and it's going to give up uh, critiques and, and really, uh, uh, get us on gear uh, to to really be excited about the work that we're producing. And then I, I'm going to talk about the marketing, which, you know, I'm so passionate about too. How do we take this, which we do in the studio and, and bring it out into the world, right? In, in, the, in the 2021 world in which we live in today as well. So uh, it's going to be really awesome. And you're going to be seeing very soon uh, all the information about these. And uh, if you want to know more about it, you can go to our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com right slash we evolve. So I'm putting it as a two word, but it, no space in between. We evolve um, and check it out. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. And uh, Drew, do you want to say something about that? Like what, you know, kind of uh, some of the, the sure. fun things that you're going to be doing? Yeah, I'm excited about this. I, we've been talking now about it for, mm -hmm. for a long uh, time. Yeah. Oh, a couple of months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we're narrowing down exactly what we want to do. Mm -hmm. It would, what I'm hoping uh, it will do is to challenge. And I think that that's really, you know, what you do well mm -hmm. for us, you mm -hmm. challenge us, hence the challenge. Uh, but I, I also want to be uh, challenging other artists, challenging right. them to think uh, perhaps in new, new ways, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it has to be sort of the, between the three of us, mm -hmm. there's going to be a certain uh, element of challenging. We need to challenge. Right. We, as artists, we need to challenge. And I think that this is important. We don't talk about it enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we like each other's work. We like, you know, techniques and that kind of thing. But do we really get into the studio practices, for example, mm -hmm. or into the, into the, uh, to the mental state that we need to be to be artists? And then, of course, you, uh, as everyone knows, is you know you you are a master at marketing, and again, if you if you can focus during a uh, retreat like this on those three 
key elements. Mm -hmm. That I think is the mix that makes for a perfect uh, artistic life. And then it's up to the artist to push. So right. my intention on a personal level, mm -hmm. you know, what, what I do to help push an artist to be better, to work better, to have better studio practices uh, also inspires me. So these artists that will be involved, they'll be inspiring me. So I think it's a win-win. Yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. I cannot really wait myself. And uh, so definitely go check it out. You will find also a link in the description of this particular podcast. We would love to see you there. It's going to be uh, really hands-on. So it's going to be a limited, uh, limited space because we want to make it very personal and uh, really valuable for those who come. So uh, two days, uh, really uh, just like a retreat, but uh, from all from our homes, from our studios, we'll be doing this through Zoom. And uh, it's going to be interactive. It's not going to be like a recorded video that you watch, but totally interactive. We'll be there with you. And it's going to be really, really awesome. I cannot wait. So, well, with this, Drew, I want to say goodbye for now. I'm sure that I'll be talking to you probably tomorrow the day after <laughs> through our regular That's conversations in, uh, that we have. Uh, it's been really my pleasure uh, having you here and exchanging, uh, you know, these uh, these things with our with our friends. Uh, I certainly learned a whole lot of new things about you that I didn't know, like the oh. pilot thing. That's awesome. I love aviation too, and yes. uh, so it's, it's a really it's a really fun that uh, you know to uh, to hear also your ideas, your stories, and uh, the things that you had to share with us, which inspire me, of course, to now work, go in my studio and get to work. And uh, I'm sure for many of the friends who are listening right now. Good. Well, you know what? That that goes likewise. Uh, what you've done is to inspire. And so, you know, that that infamous email to you in November was <laughs> the best thing that's ever happened in my life. Really, as a, as a career, a long career artist, mm -hmm. this was uh, easily the highlight of my uh, existence. So, and during, you. You. you know, uh, again, it's because it's communication. We're communicating, right. and when if we if we have no one to communicate with, uh, and we can't communicate through our art due to situations such as we're in right now uh, with pandemics and so, so forth, we have to have a community, and that community is this art next level. I can't thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, my friend. Of course, all right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, our friends, for uh, for being here. And if you want to see some of Drew's work, you know, if you're curious about this conversation of how in the world, uh, you know, those uh, Sergio's and Drew's uh, artwork look like, go to our Instagram. You can find Drew Harris Art on Instagram. You can find me at Sergio Gomez Art on Instagram as well. Uh, we hope to see you there. Connect there. Uh, send us a message if you listen to this particular podcast. We would love to hear from you and, uh, you know, start a conversation there as well. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Drew. We'll see you later, my friend. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Sergio. Bye. Check out our website at www.theartistnextlevel.com, where you will find our podcast library, learn about our upcoming webinars, find resources relevant to your career, and much more. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, and we'll see you at the next level. Mm -hmm.